Let's look at how to differentiate trigonometric functions. To start, let's bring in the table of already worked out trig derivatives. We won't bother proving these, but let's take a look quickly at the table. So we see that the derivative of sine is cos, and the derivative of cos is negative sine, etc. And we can use the table to work out derivatives involving trig functions. For example, let's say we had the function h of x, which is made up of the multiplication of the function sine x and tan x. So here we can use the product rule. And recall that the product rule states that when you multiply two functions, the derivative is the derivative of the first function times the second plus the first function times the derivative of the second. Okay, so here we go. First function is sine x, so the derivative of sine x from our table is cos x. So this becomes the derivative of sine x is cos x times the second function tan x plus the first function, sine x, times the derivative of the second function. And the derivative of tan is secant squared x. So we can put that in here. And we should say here that that's the derivative of the h of x function. Now, depending on your course or program, you might be asked to simplify this by using trig identities, if possible. But for our purposes, we're just going to leave it like that, just to demonstrate how we could use the table and rules and, and, and theorems such as the product rule to solve trigonometric derivatives. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Here we have h of x equal to sine x over e to the x. So we have a trigonometric function and an exponential function, and they are being divided. So we can apply the quotient rule. And recall that the quotient rule states that the derivative is the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. Okay, so h prime of x here would be the bottom function e to the x times the derivative of the top function. So again, the derivative of sine is cos, so we'll put that here, minus the top function sine x times the derivative of the bottom function. And if you remember, the derivative of e to the x is itself e to the x, all divided by the bottom function squared, so e to the x all squared. Now this is an answer, the calculus is done, but what we can do is simplify this. We have top terms both have an e to the x in them, as does the bottom. So let's factor that out. I'll move up so we have some space to work with here. So we can factor out an e to the x at the top, which would leave us with e to the x cos x minus sine x all over e to the x all squared. Then we can cancel an e to the x at the top with one at the bottom using laws of exponents. And that would give us cos x minus sine x all divided by e to the x. And that would be an answer for us, simplified. Okay, let's look at one more example. So let's say we had a function h of x, which is the natural logarithm of secant x plus tan x. And if we remember that the derivative of ln x is 1 over x times the derivative of x. So this would become h prime of x would equal 1 over secant x x plus tan x times the derivative of secant x plus tan x. Okay, let's bring in our table just briefly to look at the derivative of secant x, which is secant x tan x, and the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. And we're using here the sum rule. Okay, let's create some space here for us. 
So this would become the derivative of secant x is secant x tan x plus secant squared x, which is the derivative of tan, times 1, which would just be that, all over secant x plus tan x. Okay, just let me get rid of the table here so we have some more space. Now this is an answer. It, the calculus is done. But let's apply some trig identities to see if we can't simplify this. One way to approach this is to convert everything to sines and coses. So we're going to use secant x equal to 1 over cos x and tan x equal to sine x over cos x, those two identities. So if we did that, we would get 1 over cos x times sine x over cos x plus 1 over cos x all squared divided by 1 over cos x plus sine x over cos x. Okay, let me move these over here so I can have more space. All right, so this would give us at the top, 1 times sine x would be sine x over cos squared x plus 1 over cos squared x, all divided by 1 plus sine x all over cos x. So we're going to apply our knowledge of fractions. We have a common denominator here, so that would give us sine x plus 1 all divided by cos squared x divided by 1 plus sine x all over cos x. So to divide we can reciprocate this and change it to a multiplication. So let's do that. This would become multiplied by cos x over uh, 1 plus sine x. Now sine x plus 1 and 1 plus sine x are the same thing. They just swap the order because they're both positive. So we can cancel those two out. And we can cancel 1 cos x here with 1 in the bottom there. So we would end up with 1 over cos x, which is, if we look at our identity here, secant x. So the derivative of ln secant x plus tan x is secant x. And there you go.